I recently had a chance to go out for a VIP test drive with the Electra Mechanica Solo at Fully Charged Live in San Diego. This is actually one vehicle I was really excited to try out. So the Electra Mechanica Solo is a three-wheeled, two-door, single-seat auto cycle that starts at $18,500 as MSRP before any other credits. It is only sold, unfortunately, in California and Arizona but it is classified as a auto cycle. In this Solo that I'm driving is the red exterior color. It does have traditional key fob with unlock lock and then also a cargo release button as well. Uh, so walking around the Solo here, it is really small. Uh, so basically compare it to a Smart for Two EV and in between a Spark EV. That's about the size of this vehicle. You do have about five cubic feet of space here in this Solo, so plenty to do your daily commute or daily driving to the grocery store, wherever you're going. Uh, so stepping into the Solo, it is really easy to get in and out of. You definitely sit lower than I kind of expected, which is completely fine. Um, but it is really nice. You have all the creature, creature comforts you could ever need in this vehicle as well. Uh, what's interesting is it is no push button start. You actually have to insert the key and then turn it and then the vehicle powers on. What's nice about the Solo is you do have a digital gauge cluster here that gives you all of your readouts such as your time, the temperature, your state of charge, your power regen and charge meters, which is really helpful. Uh, what gear you're in, how many miles you have of EV range, what your distance is, uh, and then what your miles per hour is. So it's been really helpful to actually have the screen here right in front. What's nice is you do have a electric uh, parking brake here. And then what I also like about the Solo is when you put it into reverse, you actually have your backup camera right there. You don't have a rear view mirror since it is a single seat. So it's really convenient to kind of have this, but that is your gear selector. It's just a little dial. You click it to you either have reverse, neutral or drive to put it into park. You just press that electric parking brake once again. But the buttons and stocks and everything are really easy, really convenient to figure out. I didn't have a hard time figuring those out. And the people at Electromechanica who were putting these on were super helpful in helping me find the right controls that I need before I actually went on my drive. So shout out to them. They were really, really, really helpful getting my bearings here. You do have AC, you do have heat. You have some controls for your mirrors, the trunk release right there as well. So you do have everything you need just for your simple daily commute. It is a single seater, so I think it has all the features you could ever need in here. Um, and it's funny that today, the, on this day that we were doing this, it was really hot. So the AC definitely came in handy this day. And speaking of AC, you do have two vents that go towards the driver here. Uh, so you do get quite a lot of airflow in the vehicle. Uh, one thing to mention here too is your HVAC is on the left uh, for your controls. Then on the right, you do have your radio. It's just a simple JVC unit. Uh, you can connect your phone via Bluetooth as well to this vehicle. Let's dive into the specs and driving impressions of the Solo. So looking at the exterior here of the Solo, you do get full LED lighting front and rear. What I find interesting is on the hood there is actually your accent lighting and your high beams since the vehicle, the Solo sits so low. So looking at this red Solo, I think the black grille looks really nice. It finishes off very nicely. The LED lighting looks really nice, including the accents, the DRLs, and the turn signals as well. These 15 inch wheels on the Solo also look really nice. They, I think they fit the size very well. I don't think I'd probably go any bigger than that. So this Solo is ready for 56 horsepower and 103 pound feet of torque, driven to the rear single wheel only, powered by a 17.4 kilowatt hour liquid cool lithium ion battery pack that gives you up to 100 miles of EV range. You can charge your Solo from zero to 85% in about 12 and a half hours on a 110 volt or two and a half hours on a 220 if you have access to that. The Solo has a top speed of about 80 miles an hour. You can get there, you can get zero to 60 in about 12 seconds, but it feels quicker than that probably because it only weighs 1700 pounds. But because of its size, the Solo does not have airbags. It actually has steel reinforced beams across the vehicle for your front and rear crumble areas and also for your doors and your overhead roll bar as well. So the Solo does have a three year, 36,000 mile for warranty or five years and 45,000 miles for the limited battery warranty. 
Getting into the interior of the Solo, I didn't really have too many expectations for the vehicle. So there is a lot of plastic on the inside here, but I think that's completely fine for this price point of just about $18,500. The one thing I would note is you do have a single cup holder there on the right hand side and I actually found this seat to be really comfortable. It does have like a leather et type material. It is heated for those cold California mornings but it is manually adjustable as well. But popping the cargo space, I thought for a single seat auto cycle, uh, this actually does have quite a lot of storage space for all your needs and your runs that you may do. So now you might be wondering, well, what is the Solo like to drive? So let me tell you about it. I do like this steering wheel. It's not anything fancy. It is manually adjustable, but it does have a nice feel to it. Uh, you do sit lower and I'm only 5'4", so I am naturally short anyway. So I do sit a little bit lower than I thought I would. I did adjust the seat, but I still feel like I should sit up a little bit higher, but that's okay. So the solo itself it is a really fun and unique experience i've never been in a single seat auto cycle before uh, so this is my first time in something just like this and i thought it was a lot of fun so driving the solo the one thing i will mention is there is regenerative braking but I found that it's not as strong as what I'm used to in other electric cars. So you do have to modulate the braking, which actually feels really nice and sturdy. So I had no issues with that. There is just a regular D mode. There are no paddles. There is no one pedal driving in the solo, but you do have some regen to kind of help you slow down, which is still really nice in a EV. I will say because this is an auto cycle and not a full size electric vehicle, there was a lot of road noise, but I kind of came to expect that just in terms of the fact that it's not a full size electric vehicle. So you do get a lot of road noise, but the one thing I did appreciate was I actually got a lot of electric motor whining noise, which I actually like to have that in my vehicles. I actually like hearing that. So it's kind of cool to kind of hear that. But the uh, throttle acceleration is really good. The pedal has a really good feel to it. The brakes have a really good feel to it. Really nice and strong. So I really like that about the Solo. The acceleration, uh, whenever you put your foot on the throttle, it is very gradual, but also a little torquey since you have 103 pound feet of torque. So it really helps to get you going so it feels like you're going quicker than you actually are, for example. Another thing I wanted to point out is visibility in the Solo. Because I am a short driver, it was actually really easy to see out of the Solo, both the windshield and the side windows. The one thing I was trying to get used to though on my test drive was the fact that there's no rear view mirror. So you do have your reverse camera obviously in your digital dash, uh, but you can't turn that on manual. You just have to look at the side mirrors, but visibility was definitely not an issue in the Solo. And speaking of driving, so I found that the Solo was actually really fun to whip around the turns. Uh, the steering is very commutative, so you know exactly what the wheels are doing and what the steering is doing as well. And you could easily make a U-turn. So there's a lot of U-turns that we were making here in San Diego on our test route. And I thought that it was really fun just to kind of whip a U-turn in the Solo. It's really fun to drive, so definitely check it out. Another thing is this vehicle doesn't only have four speakers, so I just did a brief radio test uh, with the JVC radio, and it's decent. You know, it's just gonna get the it'll get the job done for your daily driving, but it's nothing special. But you know, it has Bluetooth connectivity, so you can connect your phone and play your favorite music and go from there. I just want to give a special shout out to the Electromechanica team. They were amazing for my test drive with them here in San Diego. So definitely recommend if you are in California or Arizona, definitely check out Electromechanica and see if you can test drive the solo. I think you'll have a lot of fun as much as I did.